I'm Andy Adams, Managing Editor at Canadian Yachting Magazine, and I am on board the brand new Marlow Main Ship 32, and with me is David Marlow. Good morning. Good morning, Andy. Here we are in the cockpit of the Marlow Main Ship 32, and it's quite a unique arrangement. Maybe David can tell us how this transom works. Well, as we began to uh, develop the boat, we wanted to give it a signature look all of its own, and so we built a, a radius transom, which had many benefits. One was that it extended the water line. Water line length is always of benefit to, to any yacht uh, of any size, the longer the better. And so by doing this, uh, we gave it a different, very different styling, but also gave it features with that styling that improved its operational characteristics. The longer water line adds more displacement speed, less resistance at higher speeds. And while doing so, the ideas began to flow, and we decided, gee, since we're doing such a good job with the uh, Marlow Hunter sailboat and uh, folding transoms and some call them a teak beach, that we've done, why not do it with a power boat? And so we built a electrically, electrohydraulic activated uh, tailgate that lays down and extends the cockpit, and as you can see, it becomes a really nice boarding area from a floating dock, very safe and comfortable. And uh, underway, it can be raised to any numbers of angles and left, it can be left at any angle that you choose. It's done by simply pressing a button over here. And comes up. I learned a long time ago not to hammer down the nail that sticks up. That the, that I want the nails to stick up. I don't want them all flat. And uh, it produces a wonderful environment in the factory that ideas, obviously some are sort of zany, but some bear good fruit. And so to encourage them to do things like this and then to get the engineers involved to determine the leverage, the lever arms, the forces, the torques, and all that, becomes much more of a, a team effort. And so this little project here, was it was codenamed the Buttercup Project. And it had many, many features like that that both developed and were originally envisioned as well. So that's sort of the, that's the mantra I want to foster within the company, is independent thinking and please tell me what you are thinking. And if there's a better way, let's look at it. It has a grid within it, which is very unusual for a boat of this type. And that is that it has an entire pan that reaches from where you're standing all the way to the rank uh, road blocker on the bow. And it reinforces all the key load paths. And it simply sets down in it as a big egg crate within the boat. And has locators that are designed in it to accept the things from bulkheads, engines, generators, water pumps, all those sort of things. So you begin to establish a routine which is repeated over and over once it's perfected. So we'll go inside and I'll take a look, let you take a look at some of the things we've done. The boats feature quite a lot more um, natural woods and fine fabrics. And you can take note of things like the sizes of the hinges and the hardware that's on the vessel are much, much larger than would be seen in previous years. The larger generally indicates that they're operating at less of their load capacity and therefore they last a lot longer. The, we began to do things like route the air conditioning and things like that through circuitous routes to make the air noise much less and to make the efficiency higher. Uh, rather than simply putting a unit right behind a grill that blasted out and one person froze and the other was hot. And we've, this little book, for example, has three, no, excuse me, four air conditioning outlets all the way from the, from the berth forward to here. Um, things like uh, high quality items such as uh, swiveling seats, um, ocean air blinds from UK that are wonderful and allow us to fit them to to different angles, um, such as perpendicular, or excuse me, a trapezoids or something like that, and they're very stylish and look good without in intruding on the visual space of the boat as much as some other might. We began to get innovative on ways that I wanted to see a traditional but a very high quality look of a, of a console, for example. So rather than simply mold one of, of, of plastic or fiberglass, we build them with teak we buy what's called FEQ, first European quality of teak, 
um, to, to build this boat with. And as you can see, it has a wonderful warm look, a nice steering wheel. The metal shop gets involved and puts our logo in a little laser in front of the in front of the uh, in the steering wheel, so it's a little bit a uh, little more of touch. Things are began to be built in, and everywhere we can find things, such as under here, it, mm -hmm. nice little pull-out drawer for light refrigeration duties, and sodas, beer. That's handy here without having to get up and go to the galley. Ice makers tucked away within places that might not find better usage or couldn't couldn't be as fully utilized uh, as this is. The companionway steps were. There were several ways that we could have done them. Um, we chose to build them wide. They're about an inch and a half wider than normal, inch and a quarter wider than normal at the center point, and they taper to the side for a little bit of style, but a little more footprint as you come down. And we choose the green for the, the wood that's in them. You'll notice it's highly figured because they're, 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 those are focal points as you look at it. And uh, whereas on the sides of the a flat panel wall, you wouldn't do that because a highly figured wood would, would make your eyes get funny after a while. You, you Then you do uh, book matching of your grains. We managed to get a separate shower, beautiful bright airy head, and a relatively modest sized boat. We intend for this boat to be one that a couple, a young couple or an older couple, could do, for example, the Great Loop, the St. Lawrence Seaway, etc., and be completely comfortable. So we did not try to crowd two staterooms into it in a tiny galley. Instead, we put a seven-foot-long galley, very large berth, and with a, uh, a filler, of course, to go in it. Cedar line hanging lockers, lots of drawers all through the boat, storage in every avenue. And something is rarely found anymore, a nice place to just sit down and put your socks on in the morning when you get out of bed. And uh, the boat becomes more civil when you begin to add these things to it. And it's less like camping and more like outing. So we chose not to, uh, not to maximize all the things in the boat as far as cramming as much in as we could. We chose to stretch them. We went to Denmark and bought cabin Denmark uh, lighting. These are gold plated, not because we want to buy the gold, but because gold doesn't tarnish. We changed the lighting to LED and reduced our burden on both the air conditioning and the battery to one third of what it was before. So all throughout the boat, these features began to, to pop up. Um, good appliances, good refrigeration. Here, as example, is a drop-in freezer and drop-in refrigerator, both of which have dual-range thermostats and are able to either freeze or be refrigeration. They mimic the holding plate style of refrigeration that was very popular years ago, but those were somewhat troublesome and some uh, mechanics were not able to service them adequately. These are hermetically sealed and so they're, they're built in a factory where no contaminants exist, and they drop into place as pop loaders, which is the most efficient. And around them, if you'd note, there's probably about four and a half inches of insulation, which surrounds the, the box, which in itself has two inches of insulation. And so they have very long staying power. Corian for the countertops, because we believe it's the highest quality product that we can put there. Um, other than possibly natural stones, which we also can offer. So the upgrading of the product has continued on, and one thing drives another. Um, nice features, for example, that when you open the silverware drawers in the top part of the locker, that slides back out of the way and exposes the lower pot drawer or whatever. And notice that they roll now on ball bearing stainless steel slides and that the doors on it are dovetailed, which is an art that's being lost in most of the world. But all of our drawers are dovetailed and ride on stainless steel slides. They, what that really means as far as the benefit is that the ball bearing slide will allow it to be loaded up with canned goods, pots and pans, and still roll and open just the same as it does when it's empty, rather than sticking and buying it. 
each lock has two methods of locking. When I close it, a ball catch secured it for when you're at dockside. When you're underway though, that one is a secondary level so that things don't spill if you're in rough weather. The Everest is quite similar in that um, we chose not to to try to uh, do an island berth there because though at first glance it looks quite good, but in Yasu this size, it's quite difficult to, to do a real island berth in the vow and, and have access while maintaining foot room for the individuals. We envision the couples that, that on this boat that they're looking to be pretty darn comfortable when they go away for long periods during the loop or the Bahamas or wherever it may be. So we buy a real mattress, a custom-made mattress for this rather than just a slab of foam and put a pillow top on it and the blue a large object up there goes in and makes it into one large bed which is actually larger than an island bed could possibly be. Its benefit during the day is that being able to make it is quite simple. The ladies make uh, quite a few complaints and realist, uh, legitimately they make the complaint that their island beds and cramped for spaces are very difficult to maintain or to, to make. They end up crawling all over the top of the bed to try to make them, and so it's a pretty common source of complaint. This one, you can obviously can walk right up to it and put the mattresses up, uh, covers on, and whatever you'd like to do without any fuss whatsoever. We've chosen to buy high-end products, as I said, such as Bose um, systems for the boat, so that the sound is very, very good quality. The lighting fixtures are from Italy. Um, even though they're inside, they're waterproof and servicing them is simply a matter of turning the light to the left. The lens comes off. You notice it even has an O-ring in there to seal it against moisture. And so when we go through these vetting processes, this new awakening um, is getting everyone to involve that it's sort of like the Napa commercial that I like very much. The Napa commercial says there are no unimportant parts. And I, I think that's the way that uh, we're, we're dealing with probably the most valuable time that a human being has on Earth, the leisure time with their family. And so the best that we can do is what they deserve to make sure that time is as well spent, trouble-free as possible.